Imagine you're buying an energy bar after seeing an ad for one. The energy bar company wants to show why their product is the best by using statistics in their ad. You might doubt what they're saying. They might not be saying something as ridiculous as, we'll make you three times faster, but they might try and trick you in some way. With statistics, it's always good to doubt the conclusions or graphs being offered, and this goes for your exam too. If you're given a graph, it's always useful to think of ways the graph or data might be misleading you. Sometimes you might be asked, do you trust this conclusion? Or how can you improve this test? And almost always it will come down to the statistical method, which you might have learnt about in class. There are many ways you can think of these. Would you trust me if I told you that the mean driving time for a race course is really fast for people who tried the energy bar when I'd only tested three people? One of the most common issues is sample size. With this example, we know that three people just isn't enough to make such a big claim. When you add more and more people, any big outliers or weird results average out better. Maybe one of our drivers was actually a professional and the other two weren't. When there aren't enough people in our sample, outliers can make a massive difference. In general, the more and more people you include in a test, the more accurate the information. Unless you had everyone or everything in the world as the sample in your test, which I doubt, this can always be improved. Bias is another big one. Would it be fair to talk about the mean height of New Zealanders if we only measured primary school kids? Probably not. We know there can be differences between people, gender, age, region. These and many others can all be important in your data. So avoiding bias is crucial in statistics because different people might do things better or worse than others. Back at the headquarters of our energy bar company, we might make this graph for the ad. Notice anything wrong with it? Look down here at the vertical axis. It doesn't start at zero. If we're comparing the heights of the bar, it can be pretty misleading. Let's fix that. Notice how much of a difference that makes? In a similar way, this student scatter plot shows a positive trend. But look how far everything is from the trend line. Whether on purpose, like our evil company, or accidental, like our student, graphs can be misleading. So it's important to look at everything carefully. Another mistake that might be made is just using the word average. Remember our other videos? Sometimes one average is better than another, and not knowing which one they used means it's hard to see if they've made a mistake. It could be even worse. They might be using the mean for one group and the median for another. Not good. Often it pays to think about how they did the test. In our test, the drivers ate the energy bar after they'd already gone round the track, before doing the same course again. Knowing the course, they might have done just as well without the energy bar if they raced again, already knowing the track. Here's some things to remember. Be doubtful. There are always ways to improve things. Too little data in a sample means outliers have more effect. Studies can be biased. You want a mixture of groups where possible. The method might change our results. Always be clear what you mean by average.